Hi, hey guys, welcome back. So this is gonna be another video, just like the Harbor Freight video. I'm trying to get these out really fast. Um, so, and trying to keep the time down so so y'all don't have to watch so much time. I'm trying to keep them under 30 minutes. Uh, so this is gonna be over the Amazon products I would recommend everyone should have or think about getting. Or that I would really highly recommend. Um, first starting out with the really highly recommended products are uh, these couple things are extremely basic right here. What's in my hand is less than is about ten dollars No, about fifteen dollars worth of tools So all of this is right here is these are stainless steel rods of different sizes um, I think they go down three thirty second or they might go down to a uh, a sixteenth um, Is these uh, I use them for um, hole sizing or hole gauging whatever you want to say and um, so I, what, if I'm trying to figure out the diameter, I use my calipers, I take a measurement off this and I stick it in that hole. If it's too big or too small, I know I need to go bigger, smaller, and then I can measure the rod once I find the right fit. Uh, I do like these a lot. And then there's these right here. These are just plain old, um, let me fix that, I dropped it. These are plain old um, shims. Thickness shims. It goes all the way down to, let's see how small does it go? It goes all the way down to 15 thousandths. Oh, wait, sorry. Yeah, so uh, it goes down to 1.1 1. 1 and a half thousandths. It's the smallest this one goes. I want to get smaller ones because I go a little bit lower th than that every once in a while. So it just depends on what you need. These are fantastic though. They are only a couple dollars a piece. Next up is I recommend everyone in the world should have a set of these if y'all are planning on doing any work yourselves is electrical pin set removers. Um, you gotta be careful with these. I use this one the most. It is a fantastic, well technically I use both of these the most. It, they are fantastic. The only problem is I have when these were brand new, I had a problem with these sticking in my palm and they would dangle. Uh, because after I was using them because I wouldn't even feel it go into my skin. They were so sharp and clean um, But they are fantastic. What you do is you stick this into the end of your electrical fitting depending on uh, What style it is on most of the ones I do you stick it in from the front You push that wire in stick this pull that connector towards it and pull the wire out uh, That will push down that clip in there and allow you slide it out. These are fantastic tools these have saved me so much money though if you have been working on those and you've been planning on getting uh, new connectors and everything you know how much those connectors cost they're a fortune you can just reuse these connector reuse the connectors as long as they're not damaged with this tool and it comes with all types i've used these little uh, pinhole as what i'm going to call them um, fist connectors and they are fantastic when you need them uh, highly recommend that Next up on the highly recommended, I would use, this is a nibbler. So, I'm gonna see if I can open it. Uh, I like to keep it in the box. I use it quite often. So what this does is it goes, what you do is there's a handle in here. You can screw it on either side and you chuck it into your drill. And what this does, it spins and it actuates this little rod here. And I actually got a, this, one, this kit actually comes with a spare rod. This one was $25. So what this does, it goes up, you push it forward, it goes, pulls it down and snips it along this other piece here. There's a little flat piece here. So each time this goes up and then comes back down, each time you push it, it pushes into that little cavity and it snaps it off um, and thereby, thereby cutting it. it like a, it's like a little half moon cuts too. Um, you can do any sort of thing with these. Uh, like this right here is designed where you can put your tool in there and you can actually rotate it around. Um, I love this tool so much when I need it. It's fantastic to have. Saves me time, headache, and money. Let's see if I can get this tool back in there. There we go. But it comes with a little instruction list. It comes with a spare rod for cutting. And in case you ever break one of these, which I would be very impressed if you broke them, is it comes with a heat-treated uh, spare cutter here. 
Uh, this one was 25. Do not buy the super cheap ones for like $15. They will break on you no matter what. Um, this one is a uh, Dipfios or Disfios, however you want to pronounce that. They are fantastic tools. And sorry if I'm speaking really fast. I'm just trying to keep this uh, video under the um, 30 minute mark just so y'all don't have to watch, watch it too much. And YouTube will also help me out on that. Next up, and I have to. I have to let y'all know, uh, if you use this tool to fill up um, non-refillable canteens and you drive with them, they are considered uh, illegal and they will be, you will be charged, it's either $500 or $5,000 per tank. Uh, those are those little green canisters per tank uh, if they find out that you refilled them and you never refill them all the way full. Even on the refillable ones, if they say, oh yeah, you can fill this one up to all the way completely full to whatever it's recommended at, do not fill it up to that much. If it's a one pound recommended tank, do not fill it to one pound. Um, do a couple ounces less than that, probably around 14 or 13. Uh, but what you do, you put, you screw this onto the end of your propane tank, your uh, the 20 pound, 30 pound, 100 pound propane tank. You want to freeze those tanks if you can't. If you if you can't, if you can't, that's all right. This will still work. You screw this into your tank. You screw your bottle onto here. You open your tank upside down. That way, the liquid goes from your tank into the bottle. If you do it upside right, that you're only getting gas into the bottle and it doesn't want to pressurize correctly. So you do it upside down, and then you, after a couple seconds, you take it off. You weigh it. You want it around 12 to 14 ounces is what you want it at. If it hits that mark or somewhere around that mark, then you're good to go and you have a nice, uh, a nice newly filled tank. Next up, this is more expensive. This is a, um, I'm gonna call it a marking roller. It's, uh, it's by Inker Rules. It's an aluminum uh, channel, T-channel here that's been painted. Uh, and what this is, the reason I got this is because of how nice it is. So what you do is you can take, it's either a 0.5 or 0.7 um, mechanical pencil. And you can put it in these holes here. And you can pull it towards you or push it away from you uh, along a straight edge here and mark it. And this thing goes to 60 fourths of an inch. So you, it's extremely precise. Um, and it goes up to 12 inches, so that's everything. On the end here, you do have a measuring system that goes from zero to three inches. Um, so this is fantastic. This one goes in, it goes in 60 fourths um, by quarter inch, by eighth inch. Uh, it also then also goes in millimeters. So if you need a millimeter measurement, this one also has millimeters on it. Next up is a pair of calipers. I am a mechanical person. I do not like the electronic calipers, so I will never have them set of mechanical calipers. These are extremely fantastic. I've tested these across all types of like verified sizes. So what this is, you have your little dial here. Yeah, this one is a, what's, what kind of is this? Where's the name on this? No, that's not the name. Okay. Oh, no, nope. right here. This one's from Anytime Tools. So what you have is here is a little dial, and I have this all the way shut, and you can you can turn it to anywhere you need it. So if you need it there, you can turn it there. If you need it there, you can turn it there. I'm gonna set mine back to zero. There we go. Make sure it's all correct. And there. Now it's set back to zero. And then if you need to say if I needed. 45 millimeters you line up your red dial here to the zero and you can lock it in and you can reuse that measurement all the time all you need to do is learn how to use one of these they're extremely basic to learn you have your you have your interior spikes and your exterior ones here um, i use this all the time it also has a depth gauge on it so say if you need to go all the way down here and i would start at six inches and if i need it so that's a, exactly six inches right let's get to that that's exactly six inches this thing goes by the thousand i mean not the thousand the uh the yeah actually this one goes by the thousand 
or no two thousandths. No, okay, yes. It goes by the thousandth of an inch uh, on your dial, and then by the tenth of an inch on your um, on your ruler here. And what you do, this is a depth gauge right here. So you put this in where you need it, and you can and you can scroll it up or down uh, to wherever you need it to set your depth. Then you have your little thumb reel right here. So your little thumb reel, so you can push that thumb and incrementally do it very small increments. This again is to the thousandth of an inch, and you can go in between each dial, and it would be to the half thousandth, roughly. Um, uh, so there's that. So I keep this in this case at all times in case it gets dropped or something. I also don't want chemicals on it. Next up. I made this little box here um, for this because this only came in a plastic set. These are the the Hanson. I call them square uh, square tip uh, screw extractors. What you do is you drill your hole, you hammer these in, and you can turn it right, uh, clockwise or you can turn it counterclockwise to get your screw out, uh, depending on if it's counterclockwise or clockwise. I love this set. What I do is without destroying the heat treating on these. You, I grind down the tip. So here's a here's one that has the tip ground off, and here's one without. I don't usually grind the tip off the big ones, but uh, this here's one with the tip not ground off. And what that does, it allows me to get as far in there as possible. You want a little chamfer on these, but it gets, allows me to get in there as far as possible to grab the um, to grab the screw walls, and it um, and that is fantastic. Next thing up is this is a harbor freight grinder this is a uh, bracket that i got for i think it was this one actually came from harbor freight i think they're seven dollars from harbor freight it's a little bracket that'll fit on uh, these grinders people were saying they don't fit on these grinders they fit perfectly on these grinders now they do not fit very well on the dewalt grinders i tried it they do not fit well on the dewalt grinders at all but they will fit on the milwaukee i don't know about the makita uh, Next up, though, I bought these uh, these tile cutting blades. I use them for glass, but these tile cutting blades. People were saying how awful these are. I as long as you run water on these, they're fantastic. I bought I got a five pack for ten dollars, a five pack for ten dollars. I mean seriously, that's ridiculously cheap, and it cuts perfectly for the price. Like it's not a super gloss finish or like almost sandable finish. You'd have to sand the edge of the glass if you want that. But it is amazing at how um, nice of a cut you get from these super cheap blades. And these are, I think all of us won't know. These are ROK Rock Blades. ROK is the, that's how you spell that. And they have five packs for like $10. Or when I got it, they were $10. Next up is, where are they? They're right here. Let me get those. Next up are these little doohickeys. This will save you so much time. So if you know with the thread gauge, it only gives you the gauge or the, uh, or in case if it's millimeter, the pitch. Um, well, the thread size. These are for determining what thread size you have. So if you don't, if you don't have a pair of calipers or you don't want to get your thread gauge, you get this little thing out right here. And what this is, this one is, this one's M12 by one and a half. It's the same thing that you would see at Home Depot on those little brackets. What you do, you grab your screw and you can either screw this into something or you can screw something into it or screw this onto something. And if it screws on properly, that's your size. This one goes, has all the sizes. This one has M12 by one and a half, one and a quarter. Then it goes to uh, M10. And the one I use the most is going to be the I do the M7 by one and the M6 by one is the ones I check the most. They have an M5 by 0.8. Uh, again, these are just the most common uh, threads. So that if you need like a specially type thread, like let's say if it was an M6 by one and a half, it, this one does not have it, I don't think. Let's check. Yeah, this one does not have an M6 by one and a half. That's a very rare thread size, but they do sell them and machines do use them. 
This, if you have an N6 by one and a half, you will not be able to check for that. So I'll set those right there. Next up is this, um, this is a thread repair kit from um, AKM. This is the 261 piece SAE and metric set. So what this is, is you have these special thread taps right here and your drill bits and then you have your these are this is the driver for the insert so you put the little in, you drill your hole out tap it put your insert on this screw it in there and that insert will give you your new uh your new threads if you can, this one will save you time and money now the problem is it's 95 it's 95 dollars for this set and it doesn't it does not come with it so i have to i'm having to order a a another one of these little little kits individually because it m7 by one uh thread repair set so that is so that's the only downside they don't have really specific sizes they have the most common sizes they have the m6 the m8 the m10 and m12 in different thread sizes um other than that I want to say that it's everything that goes for Amazon that is like your basic shop tool or close to a basic shop tool. I'm just looking around right quick to see if I see anything else that I missed out. I know I'm missing uh, some shop tools. There's other tools that are uh, higher end or more expensive that I will put in a separate video because they require, they're, they're one of those ones that would require a separate video all on their own. Uh, Went over that. Oh, I bought myself a dado set. It is, let me grab it real quick. It is a Ushlon, um, yeah, Ushlon 5 8 inch dado set. So, um, they are, it's a fantastic set. I think it was 70 or $80 for that set. And it's a fantastic set. There's not one thing wrong with that. They are fantastic. You want to be careful with those because right out of the box, they will cut you. That's how sharp they are out of the box. And they stay sharp. I've used them constantly and they're still sharp. Um, other than that, that's everything from Amazon that I can think of right off hand that I would that either I use on a daily basis or that I use in certain situations that makes it faster, easier, or makes more sense to do it that way. And so that would be everything that's from heart, that, that's from Amazon. If you like this video, please comment, like, subscribe. If you didn't like this video, give me a thumbs down and tell me why. If you did like it, give me a thumbs up and tell me why. Um, and that's everything. If you want to support this channel, keep it from having been monetized uh please look at the description below there will be a patreon page a patreon link there that will um that you can go to and help me out on this channel if you in case you if you want to me to review a certain uh product that i have put in this video at all uh wow. give me a comp put it in the comment down below and tell me what you uh liked about what you want to see in this video uh, so please comment, like, subscribe. Have a good one. Thanks. Bye.